I'm gonna be going with 7U for our space bar, so don't need that one. Side. Get a little bit more on good measure.
Then we gotta get all the screws out on the stabilizers. So we're gonna need six 2U stabilizers, because this is a full-size build. Uh, well, not if we go with the split backspace, so five. Um, should be good. So I need ten sets of stabilizer housings. So I have here one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine. And we need a lot more sliders too, I only have four. So need one more housing. And a bunch more sliders. Seven, three more. There we go, that's the way you do it. And I need five wires, so it's one, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten. Actually, I'm gonna get materials for one more setup just in case. So that's enough for six 2U stabilizers. I'll go ahead and put the rest back in. The rest of these stabs should be enough for a M60A build that we have coming up because all of Rommelworks boards use uh, 7U space bars. Let's get down to looping. Oh, wait. I need to remove these three. And last one. Oh, I can't even put my hands on. <laughs> sides of these uh, the housing here. I'll put the ones I'm done with on this side.
go. About halfway there now. Go. Let's get a little bit more here. Two more. Let me just count up first so we can make sure whether or not we actually need this one. I have my shift, right shift, so that's two. Enter for three. Uh, we're gonna go split uh, backspace HHKB style, so no need for there. And then three more here, so six. Yep, I'm gonna need to loop these. That is a healthy amount of lube. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Ready, it's all the housings. Now we gotta do all the sliders. Let's put this straight into a housing. There's the opening, there it is. Okay. 
Let's do that a few times. Okay, it landed like it did. Channel lube. All right. Let's go ahead and get this in. Like so. Move on. We're halfway there.
Okay. Two more to go. Last one. And then we can move on to switches. Bars in. That requires some more loot. Tempted to just dip it in, but that would be a little overkill. This one, our shift. lube (laughs) 
And this is what I had to do for your build too. Oh my goodness. Good day when my, all my fingers are covered in thick lube. <laughs> okay. Whoa. Actually, looks nasty. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this one should go for enter. Yeah. Let's see here. Right there is good, I think. Oh, they really Swiss cheese this board. It's hard to get the stabs in where they're supposed to go. There we go. Okay, another wire. Another day. go for the zero key. Alright, there's two more wires and we can be done with lube. Yes. Oh, this is making it really hard. Okay. There we go.
hour short of wire. Gotta pull out the bag again. No. I thought I grabbed everything I needed. Apparently not. Oh, last one. I need another wire. There we go. Okay, last leg, let's go. for the right shift right there cool okay what hands now <laughs> all right I'm gonna brush down place where the wire meets the plastic one more time on everything. You can never have too much lube.
Okay. That's looking really good, actually. Cool. Alright, let's do one last wipe down of all my stuff. Those screws can start going in. Okay, let's bust out the tool roll again. screw in all the stabs that we just installed. The key here is you don't want to over tighten because you'll strip out the plastic inserts if you do. Um, okay. Alrighty, I think we're good. All the stabilizers are in. I'm just gonna take a look real quick, make sure that everything's cool. Alright, let's go ahead and I'm gonna put the parts tray to the side. Um, and I'm gonna leave the bit inside the driver. Put that there. And I'm gonna move this PCB out of the way because the keyboard we're building today
is quite large. Um, so we're building the TX-108SC, and it comes in its own type of carrying case. desk real estate to open up the case any further. So this is the TX-108SC. Um, it's got a brass plate, aluminum body, and a brass weight in the bottom. This board, unbuilt, weighs around 4 kilos, or 4.2 kilos. I'm not really sure how to get it out of the case. Do I pull on this? I really don't want to stretch out the cloth though. Uh, I'm gonna pick it up from uh, this effort plate right here. Okay. Um, under the cloth, we get. And then there's a cape. And some feet and some screws, but I think the feet are already installed on the bottom. If I'm not wrong, yep, they're right there. Okay, let's clear this case out of the way. side, there's like these uh, finger grips. That might be the first time I've seen cutouts for your fingers on a board. Because it's just so heavy. Okay, looks like that 12. Oops, that screws along the bottom. does, but it's not quite long enough. Does it still fit if I have an adapter on it? Does it? Huh. Okay. We might have hit our first road bump here. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We can put the bit all the way in. As far as it go. That I will shove this on top of that. Okay. 
Okay. Then how I'm gonna use the driver to push that whole thing along. I'm a genius. Okay. I think it's loose. Okay, I'm just gonna loosen all of them like that. And then we're gonna tip the board to get them all out. It's probably the jankiest thing I've done ever to a board build. But the, um... The screws are just so recessed that there's not really much else I can do. Seems to work a little bit better. Yep, there we go. I do have spare screws just in case I strip anything. I'd just rather that we not strip anything there. Really, honestly. Um oh I can use a magnetic N. Maybe. one way to do it. Okay, so there's this acrylic piece here that is kind of fragile. This is diffuse, to diffuse the LEDs in kind of like a light ring around the board. Excuse me while I extract all these bolts. I don't want to lose anything, so I'm going to be extra careful here. Uh, they probably shouldn't have machined so far down. Should have just gone with them um, shouldered bolts, but I see the appeal of keeping all the bolt lengths uniform, because if they're machined that far down, um, the two sets of bolts can just be the same length, I guess. Two ones right here. One. I appear to be missing. Oh, no, there it is. I'm actually going to remove the bottom weight. I can show, get this on video. So, what they did with, what TX keyboards did was they, instead of like a traditional plate of brass as a weight, it looks like a plate here, but on the underside, they milled um, fins that actually come through the aluminum bottom and create this striped look. And I've always been curious about what that really looks like. We're gonna go ahead and clean up a little here.
Okay, there's six Phillips head screws holding the weight in. Can I remove them? I can. But it looks like these haven't been removed since they uh, did final assembly for this. These are kind of tight, and my hands are still kind of covered in 205 grade zero lube. Alright, this might have to wait until later. I might need to get better tools for this. Like a right angle Allen key or something. Okay. Then actually we can set the bottom away. Grab the top back, because we're going to need this plate. And that is held in. Nothing yet. More Phillips heads. Make sure we get it big like so. So this is a top out design. And it just provides a little bit more of an even type of experience as you go all the way around the board. And the plate's held in to the top of the frame with 10 screws. I think they're all evenly spaced as well. I think the only complaint I have about this build so far is that they opted for uh, mini USB instead of USB-C. one shiny brass plate. There's no scratches on it that I can see. It's a lot of dust, but other than that, I'm kind of surprised because this is a pre-owned um, build. I guess one more complaint is that TX used um, like these inserts here as their logo. It's a T and an X in there. You can see through them. Has to allow light to shine up through the uh, top of the case, but uh, this implementation isn't too great. The anno matching between the actual button and the uh, case isn't great either. Is that a scratch? That is not. Okay. Bring the top of the case, I mean the plate back. And we bring the PCB back as well. And this goes like such over the whole thing. And then I kind of want to make sure that our switch placement is correct here. I have um, Milky Telios, which are Telios uh, 65 gram E2 switches, and the tops are replaced with the Milky kind of Milky White housing from a uh, Gator on Yellow. Um, these have been lubed with uh, 205 grade zero and the springs were dipped into a silicon uh, lubricant. Let's see. I'm just gonna put some dummy switches in real quick.
this has to go into the center between those two stabilizer posts. Is this it? I can't really tell. I'm gonna guess it's this right here. I'm actually going to remove the top four here because I want to use them for either arrow keys or on these mods.
Okay, for the rest of the build, I'm gonna be sticking with these normal Tilius without the milk attack.
I'm kind of confused. How's this supposed to go in here? Is it just vertical? Oh, it is. That's whack. Because usually these clip in uh, sideways. Okay. I think that that is that. I'm gonna go ahead and populate the bottom row right here. I'm gonna go ahead and populate everything, I guess. Okay, this goes right here.
that's backspace, which we don't need. We did eight. Four. Prince Gold was here. is done. That's a right shift. not look like the correct error key profile.
Okay, we're missing quite a few things actually. Uh, escape. Actually, not digging the screen so much. Switches left to put in to this bottom row. And I gotta decide what I want these to do. being a smaller control there is. to be larger. So I guess it's gonna be control I'm missing something that I should be catching, but am not. Hmm. can't be all kind of normal sized. 
uh, need a function key. Or I could just do this as second alt. And then next I want function. And it is menu, which would be this. And then another control. Do I have another control? Is a third question. I guess we can go with super for now. And we need eight taps. Missing an up arrow here, and I think that is a misprint. Hmm. That's gonna be a problem. Oh no. Gotcha. We're done. Okay, so we need like four row four keys up here. Problem is, those are kind of hard to come by. Um, We'll figure those out later. Okay, before I solder anything, I actually want to bolt this back into the case and just do a little bit of typing. I'll probably solder 
off stream because I'm not sure um, what layout I want yet for this. Magnetic bolts, very cool. This is not a magnetic section making this a lot harder than it should be. down all the way. I'm just gonna make sure that I'm happy with the way everything is sitting. I am. Okay. Let's go ahead and lock everything down. don't want to over tighten because otherwise I could end up stripping something. Okay. Thanks for following. Welcome to the stream. Hello. 
I'm just putting the back of the case of the build on. I haven't soldered the internals yet because I'm not sure we're gonna stick with this layout, so just gonna do some typing on it first before I lock anything in. I know, right? Um, this is actually a commission. Um, this is not my personal build. Um, my personal build is here. It is a CA-66 in E-White. But this one is for a client, so I do not get to keep it, unfortunately. Um, this is a TX-108SE. It's from a couple years back, um, the group I ran, I think in 20, say 2018. Looping a pre loop built with spray loop. Don't use WD 40 or actually any type of spray loop for that matter. Because uh, spray lubes like WD 40, um, they actually leave uh, like a layer of residue after they dry. No, super lube is fine. Um, but when I, when I heard, saw you type spray lube, I think most people would think like WD-40 or something like that. It's pretty, uh, super Loop is fine. Super Loop is really thick though, so you probably only want to use that on linear switches. If you did that on a tactile board, you'd lose a lot of the tactility that the switches have to offer. set everything up so that I can align all the bolt keep stream I know right hydrate Putting the bottom onto a TX-108. You don't know how to lube the stabs? Yeah, if you don't disassemble and take them off, it'll be really hard. You could use a thin, like a thinner lube, I guess, and try to drip it down in between the slider and the housing, but there's always problems with that, right? syringe yeah I oh I, I seen people sell like super lube in a syringe if you if you like squeeze it out in there and uh, like work it into the actual stab that might be fine okay I'm just gonna go around and tighten everything up Seen people lose switches with a syringe, like switches already soldered onto a board. That would be crazy. Like, 
I, a lot of plates support switch top opening, for which you would need a tool. If your plate supports switch top opening, if you have a tool like this, you can actually peel the top of the switch off and not have to desolder or anything. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this area a little bit. And then we can go ahead and get to a type test. Yeah, this is a TX 108 SE. Or were you talking to Pharaoh? Yeah, uh, not too many customs. Few days. Jesus. It is also quite the beast. Fully built this way is. 4.3 kilos. 4.3 kilos to pounds? Let's find out. I don't do freedom units, unfortunately. Oh, this isn't plugged in yet. But luckily for us, this is wireless. I'm actually gonna switch to a different microphone real quick. I've been using a noise cancelling for the build, but now that we're getting to typing, I need to turn that off. Hello. You might hear a little bit more background noise, but that is the cost of typing sounds. Exact. Thought the CA66 wasn't wireless. Uh, okay, so the CA66 uh, was wireless uh, in round two. Um, they, uh, yeah, they had a Bluetooth 4.2 version for the PCB, and round two was also when they introduced the uh, e-white color. So that was GMK minimal on top of some unlubed telios on an aluminum plate. Now, this is my first time lubing telios, and I also did a swap. So if you look closely, this is what an uh, original telios V2 looks like. And on the alphas, I swapped the top with a milky white Gateron top from a yellow. And there's a lot of videos going around. If you search like Milky Telios, I just think they sound so good. Yeah, it does make the sound deeper. It like dampens it because the polycarbonate body of the that Zeal uses for most of its switches makes it a lot higher sounding. Oh wow. I for using a full size I have to move my hands like over 
Hmm. This is gonna take some getting used to. But it is a necessity for the programming work I do. Okay, I'm gonna move the mic a little bit closer. It might peak a little bit, sorry. Okay, switches aren't soldered yet, so I'm just gonna do some mock types. Uh, because I can't decide whether or not I like HHKB. Yeah. You like the sound of creams? That's actually what was in the uh, C66 originally. Um, I added creams lubed with PTFE powder. Okay, I'm just gonna type some gibberish. Scratchy? I'm not sure. Because, uh... Yeah. I'm not sure what I would prefer. Do I sacrifice smoothness for the sound? Okay, so these are, like, non-milky Tilios. And these are milky Tilios. Something with the same profile. These are non-milky. Non milky. Hmm. I did, so even though I lubed them, they still sound quite scratchy. Yeah, these are these are lubed like quite well. So even with all the 205 grade zero, they're still sounding a little scratchy. I'm a little disappointed honestly. happy with the mods though. The modifiers sound excellent. Oh, your first PCB. Uh, what are you building?
Are you just doing like a sandwich build with like PCB bottom plate or are you going like full custom? A good entry build? You mean like a custom or a... Or like an actual like... Full like kit, I guess. Cheap and hot swap. Um, and small. Check out the white fox from uh, Kono. Okay. We can all go take a look at the Kono. But yeah, that has been the whole build of the TX108SC. Uh, there's four missing caps here. Like, it's a full size and then some. I don't really know what I'm gonna do here, but I'm thinking like Rama Artisans probably up here. Um, GMK Bleached has some nice minimalistic artisans. So you ordered the KBD 75R2. Do those fit? I wouldn't have thought that the 75 fits in the low profile case. I don't think those are compatible. <laughs> No, I got scared for your first build there. That's a whole F row you're not going to be able to fit in that case if it's a 75. A 75% case? This is actually something I haven't seen, the UT472. Oh wait, that's tiny. That's like 40%, right? Yeah. It looks nice though. I like what they did with the PCB, like the milling on the back. Let me just take a look here. Uh, if we go to... Here. transition we can take a look at the actual uh, UT472 It doesn't look bad. It looks pretty good. If you want a 75% though, your best bet would probably be to wait for something to come back on into stock for KBD fans. Just get the 7V. <laughs> My man doesn't have the budget. Cheap and hot swap. Some of these, like what? <gasps> I was following this, uh, the IC pretty closely. Um, but I didn't end up jumping on it because of the, uh, I ended up jumping onto the, um, M65B on Rama Works. Something about that profile I just really like. Okay. Hey. 
What does the 7v run? 450. Four Benjamins. Oh, but the E white does look so good. <laughs> Not gonna lie, that's kind of crazy. I dig it a lot. <laughs> And it's Leaf Spring plate, right? I I really want to look at the actual plate. Oh, oh, that's pretty unique. So there's just like these massive relief cuts in between where, yeah, yeah, it's both Gaskin Mount and Leaf Spring. So that's kind of crazy. Like these big ass relief cuts. Normally. The relief cuts are really thin, but they went, they really just went full ham there. That's a really wide channel. Oh, that's cool. How long is this group I running for? Gawk always puts out great stuff. Follow a monkey cack. <laughs> oh, it's already over. It's so. Oh wait. Oh, I'm in. I'm in a. Asian time zone. It's already sixth today. Ooh. Are you gonna jump on? <laughs> Will this be your first build? The 7v? For I mean the technology that goes into something like that, I'd say it's justifiable. It's a low volume type of deal. The polished stainless steel also makes it quite limited. Am I gonna buy the Sun V? No, I'm already in too many buys. I'll. <laughs> I can't afford. <laughs> I can list out what I have coming in real quick for chat. I have the M65B, M60A Olivia. What else? I'm in GMK Olivia, GMK for you. Yeah. No, I can't. I can't dish out the. Uh, can't dish up the extra for the 7v. GMK Olivia is actually going onto this board. Um, with the dark gray anodization, it'll look really good. Right now, this is just GMK 9009. Yeah. And then Fuyu is gonna be going onto this board and then um, the minimal that comes off the CA66 is going to go on to the um, M65B because that's the Stormtrooper um, colorway. Are you not going to add the green? I have it. It's right here. <laughs> I'm more of a pink person though. I was tempted to just do pink for both these, but nah. Thank you. I'm actually probably going to stick with this layout. I can't decide whether or not I want to keep the uh, milky telios in. Chat, can you tell me if this sounds scratchy? I'm just going to do like some gibberish real quick. So this is 
without the milky tops. These are like normal lubed Telios, lubed with 205 grade zero. And they don't sound scratchy. I can tell you that because I can't feel it. I can feel it here though. I can definitely hear it myself. These are the milky ones. Sounds like I could just loop them more, maybe. I mean, I haven't soldered anything, so it would be quite easy. I'll probably do that off camera, because lubing takes forever. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna stick with the tops because I really like the way they sound. But I'm gonna do everything I can to make them smoother. I gotta, I gotta loop the, uh, the switch tops because most people just loop the bottoms, like the rails and also the stem, the, st the slider, uh, not the stem. But I'm probably gonna have to apply directly to the top housing also. Once I open these up. Okay. Let's see. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and... Try to flash this. Okay guys, I think I'm probably going to call it here, and I am going to flash this off stream. And after lubing the alphas again, I'll post a typing test up on YouTube. Uh, the channel is the same name as this one. Thanks for tuning in.